Hello, and welcome to a brand new Victoria 3 series with me, Dwarf Pete, where today we will be playing through a strategy called the Zulu Shuffle, or the Zuffle, if you will indulge me. Uh, I'm mostly playing this because while I put 60 hours into the game at launch, uh, while it looked and sounded great, as the amazing music comes on in the background here, uh, I found the gameplay to be just not up to the standard that I was expecting, and so I didn't cover it on the YouTube channel. However, the 1.2 patch is out now, uh, and supposedly it's quite good. I don't know, that's why we're going to be playing. And so there's three main things I want to test that will determine to me if Victoria 3 is decent. Uh, one is if the combat and the war finally got fixed. Uh, we'll see. Two is if the pop-ups that usually popped up right around here, uh, if that's been fixed. And three, uh, I want to see how better the performance has gotten. Uh, so we'll probably play until 1860 or so. And right, let's get into this. Uh, so, Zulu, you don't start out in a great position. <laughs> uh, I don't think that's um, too difficult to explain. But... Uh, there's a couple strategies I think you can go for with the Zulu. You either try to go for, where is it, uh, colonization, to try and colonize Africa, um, or you try to play tall. We're going to try to take out an early, uh, one of these guys, either Orange or Transvaal, uh, and I believe I'm going to go for Orange, I think they're the one that has the higher chance to spawn um, gold? I'm not quite sure. But we see one of the new things of the patch here, that is the strategic objective button, which supposedly allows you to tell your um, your leaders where to go. We'll see if it actually works. I mean, there's only one way you can go, so <laughs> big problem. Okay, uh, new in this patch, uh, some of the changes they've made. I played about 30 minutes of a test game, uh, and from it I could tell uh, recovery rate is far more um, valuable than it used to be. So we're going to go with this guy for now. Also kind of weird that he's devout. Uh, very rarely do I have that. Uh, we're going to go ahead and mobilize right away, because it takes a fair amount of time to mobilize as a nation that has uh, peasant levies. It's easier to do it with a... Uh, where is it? Well, it's just easier to do without a peasant levy. Uh, okay, and we're not going to worry about conscription, and hopefully Great Britain does not enter this war. Otherwise, I'm going to have to restart this Let's Play. <laughs> uh, that would be my big... If you want to know how to play most small nations in Victoria 3, restart until a great power doesn't decide to kill you at the start. <laughs> there is some amount of anti-player bias um, when it comes to Victoria 3. Okay. And he wants to subjugate me. But he's probably not going to have it. I'd love it if he just backed down. Thankfully, though, all of our troops have mobilized. Uh, we're going to start off defending. And we'll see if that does anything. Uh, while that's going on, I'm going to go ahead and queue up, uh, say, two logging camps. I'm also going to get... Uh, a trade route going. By the way, do I have any decrees? I have social mobility, sure. Get that literacy rate up. And agriculture. With our whole two livestock ranches. Oh boy. Um, something new in this patch uh, that I've seen is that we have access to, where is it? Land trade capacity. 
Uh, from what I understand, this is 50 free convoys that you can use with any nation bordering you. Um, so, heck, I, I know better than to look a gift horse in the mouth. So we are going to sell some fabric to the British. Uh, see if we can get the... Uh, yep, a trade center going in our capital. And eventually, I don't know, maybe we'll accept people? That sounds pretty weird. <laughs> Uh, and we'll go ahead and get the interest groups up there. Uh, one thing they did change in this patch is that you can no longer bust your uh, military wages through the roof. Which, oof, that's going to be a bit difficult to deal with. Okay, let's start pushing. Uh -huh, and we can kind of see our way through a battle here. Let's drop down to speed 3. Okay, I saw fence 1 there for a second. I got scared. Uh, he's got some camouflage. If we look through the phases of the battle now, one of the things that is very important uh, when it comes to war with Vittorio III, uh, and I suppose it's very important with uh, one of the parallels I can put with, say, Europa Universalis, is that you need rest time between battles like no others. Um, Often one strategy I like to do is have two generals on the same front, one always on defend, and the other cycling between attack and standing by. Uh, the reason that is is because standing by does not cost any attrition. Um, and that is important because as we can see here, uh, these troops are going to return and it's going to take forever for their manpower to build back up. If we go into this right here, their uh, morale will join quite nicely. Let's go ahead and bump it up. I will, in fact, I'll just pause here uh, as far as defending the front. And we can see how fast it takes troops to recover uh, in terms of manpower. And we can see they just took a little bit of attrition there, I think. Or maybe there was a battle. I don't know. Um... But, oh boy, we got 25 whole manpower back in a single regiment. Oh boy, 40. Given that a battle takes like 15 days, these guys still aren't up to full uh, strength. Much like in EU4. Uh, so one of the things that is very important in this patch is uh, recovery rate, and just paying attention to that. Also the kill rate. So, because of that, uh, what I think we'll do in the future is try and rush down, uh, one, logistics, and triage. It's something I've noticed, this patch at least. Um, either that, or we get tons of, um, there's actually another way you can skirt this. Uh, so this guy can command uh, 16 troops, right? But, if I build up to 25 barracks, he's going to have an extra 9k of uh, recruits to be able to pull from. Which will make things quite easy. But, uh, that war was won. And we gained an excellent tea plantation, some livestock, uh, and other barracks, which, you know what, I'll keep. Sure, why not? Uh, and we are in the deficit. Okay. In that case, looks like we're spending most of our money on the military. Uh, I'm going to be very cautious here not to get into debt. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and start putting on consumption taxes. Usually what I like to go for is um, anything that the uh, middle and upper classes use. Sometimes I'll do grain if I'm feeling spicy, but uh, that brings me into an excellent new part of the uh, UI here, and that is that uh, it now tells you your population's needs pretty easily here. Uh, I really like this down at the bottom. It tells you uh, how much their standard of living is increasing, or at least metrics. Um, so what we can see here, one thing I will point out, though, is that uh, 
Um, these pop needs still don't line up. So right here you can see 29.4% uh, grain for the uh, lower strata, and it somehow says 33.2% up here. Uh, I don't know if they're going off different month ticks, but still strange nonetheless. Anywho, uh, all this is to say, when I do consumption taxes, I like to go for these three right here. Because um, it doesn't hurt, well, not the green. <laughs> it doesn't hurt the lower class as much. So specifically, avoid fabric, liquor, furniture. That's what we got. We can do clothes. We can do fancy clothes. And uh, services are just fine. So, uh, fancy clothes, regular clothes, uh, meat, definitely don't do fabric. Uh, and I'm guessing tea is bought by the upper class. Anyhow, that, that fixes our economy straight up. Uh, what I will also do is try to pay down this debt. Because it is a bit of a problem. <laughs> um, if you're not aware... Our interest rate is 40%, which is absurd. <laughs> that is disgusting. Uh, so we'll take uh, a couple months here to pay back our interest. I do not want to deal with it whatsoever. One of the new things that they've also added in this uh, patch is the ability for private construction to happen. So if your pops become so wealthy, they will start to invest by themselves. Okay. Um, oh wow, and we are exporting a crap ton of fabric to the British Empire. Therefore, uh, I think it would be a good idea to continue that practice. Also building because we need to keep our wood uh, logging camps employed. You may be wondering, why are you building up the livestock ranches instead of the cotton plantations? For one very simple reason. Uh, usually when it comes to these beginning economies, what I love to do is I love to do, say, um, five livestock and five millet farms. And you're like, wheat? Pete, wheat is terrible. Not necessarily. It doesn't produce a ton of money on itself. What it does do, though is it gets a substantial part of your population to the ability where they can start to develop qualifications. Uh, that's really important if you're going for some kind of military-based um, play, like I am here, where you need to expand quite a bit. Uh, you can see here we're getting no officers, which is hampering our recruitment of servicemen. Um, one of the ways you can get officers is if you get people to the middle class. The other way is if you build... Um, where is it? Uh, universities? However, I don't think we're going to have the tech for quite some time. Uh, with that, uh, we got two choices here. Uh, I'm getting navigation because I'm hoping we can unlock ports, which will allow us to increase this trade center, which will help vastly in generating more income to produce more officers, uh, and that in turn will allow us to field a relatively large army. Oh, nice! Look at that! They're building a logging camp on their own. Well done, capitalists. Sorry, landowners. Well done. I would love to get you to be a block. Ooh. That's actually quite useful now. Uh, they contribute to the investment pool. One thing I would like to see, or I'll probably learn here, is uh, where... So the investment pool, that's money we can use on public buildings. What I would like to see is what pool of money is going to the private construction allocation. It's not immediately obvious to me how that's working. Uh, right, uh, I had said... <laughs> I didn't actually explain the reason why I like ranches so much. Uh, because they combo really well with enriched soil. You can get 20 extra grain per millet farm with no extra um, investment of population, which just increases the amount of revenue per farm, um, while also increasing the revenue of the livestock, 
because they produce the fertilizer to be able to sell. Thus, everybody wins in this situation. Um, so we'll go ahead and start building that up a little. We could, uh, at this moment, maybe expand the army, since we have a little bit of a uh, surplus. Or we could just invest it into another... Um, another construction center. But for the time being, I think we can just chill. I do want to see, though, if I can get somebody to sell my meat to. <laughs> Please, <laughs> don't quote me on that. Oh, I will sell tea, though. If my name is not the spiffing per uh, that's a different person. <laughs> okay, so we'll sell some tea to the British. That could never go wrong, right? They've never invaded anybody over tea whatsoever. And I should probably uh, invest a little bit into Vreistat. Um, although they look like they're do you're building a banana plantation, really? Whatever, man. Fine, okay. Alright, uh, we got ports. I think that's where my surplus uh, go to. So, I think then uh, we will attempt to get... At least, at least get religious schools. That will help us so much in trying to get uh, spread rate. Spread rate itself is largely a function of literacy. Uh, if you can get your literacy up, you will have better spreading. Uh, do not piss off the slaves. And in fact, make the landowners happy. Give me some extra... Who are you? You're my ruler, I guess? I don't know. Sure. Give me some money. Okay, good. Looks like the British love our... We're making most of our money from fabric. So that's at least good. Uh, and I'll take some extra... Uh, whatchamacallit? Yes, I will. Okay, uh, with that extra money, then what I can I feel comfortable doing is spending just a little bit of it on a construction sector. The faster we can grow our GDP, the better. I'd like to get it at least to mm, 2 million before we attempt uh, something to do with Transvaal over here. I'd like to take care of them. I just can't do it quite at the moment. Uh, that's for one big reason. Oh, I see you have almost fixed yourself. Okay. Close. Yeah, so as you can see there... Oh, I just lost it. We'll pull it back up. Uh, some officers had been hired, and they had been promoted from... There we go. Uh, aristocrats and clergymen in the livestock ranches. If we hadn't built them, then our only uh, source of officers would be from clergymen and aristocrats in subsistence farms. Which, oof, no, pass. <laughs> that is very few people being able to work uh, as officers for us. But we even managed to get the devout happy, which gives us population growth rate. Oh boy. <laughs> Definitely not something I'm super excited for. What are you going to do, right? Okay, uh, and as is, we've got nobody working in our millet farms. Why is that? <laughs> well, it's the number two millet farm in the world, at least. Uh, let's see if we can force you to do something. Are we not consuming millet? What's the deal here? That's strange. Alright, we'll uh, stop building them for the time being. Oh. As they get... There we go. Okay. Strange. I uh, don't know what was going on there. Um, I don't care if I go down in authority by a little bit. But we will now focus on what's going to generate the most wealth. We've got plenty of fabric to sell. 
Can we export anything else? Mostly fabric is our big deal. Okay. We could uh, expand our tea plantations. In fact, uh, we will go ahead and incorporate that state since it's of our primary culture. The Sotho, I believe, are here. Here. Uh, this is the wrong map mode to do this in. The, yes, the Sotho are accepted by us, I believe. You can see that right here, yes. We also have the Hosa and the uh, Ninguini, Ninguni, who I can't see. Homelands, yeah, where are they? Botswana. No, that's that's the Swana. <laughs> I I don't know. Uh, I, either way, we uh, we most of our people the uh, we, we accept them. Uh, we can also take a look at the where's it the religion map mode if I could find it. Probably um, here we go. Oh. Yeah, I'll I'll admit I do wish there was the EU four way of doing this. Perhaps I'm just rigid in how I like No, I, I want to see <laughs> take it again. <laughs> Whatever. Whatever. It's not a, it's not too it's not uh not neat. Okay, but uh I see our tea plantation is about to finish here. Looks like I reckon if we get our cell orders up a bit higher. Oh. Uh Maybe it will go into the trade route? Hard to say. Yes. Yes, okay. So here we can see it was 40 before, I remember. Now it is higher. Uh, I don't want to build too many of them, though, because... Uh, it's going to be a while before we can scale up our production. Uh, this takes pump jacks. That's like tier four. It's going to take forever to do that. Uh, so unless we use economies of scale, we're not going to be able to push it very high. And again, I'm guessing this is stuck because of officers. Okay. Uh, we also can't build any uh, anything. At the beginning, as uh, as the Zulu, A any type of manufacturers, and that's why I went with all of this. Uh, looks like you're stuck because you can't get. Um, qualifications is my guess. I'm not a hundred percent sure. We we clearly have um, peasants to get rid of peasants. Uh, basically, all you need to do is build agriculture or resources. They'll naturally upgrade into higher tier populations from there. But, uh, seeing as how the millet farms are kind of stuck right now, let's try our hands with cotton. And good, they're actually building out the logging industry. Okay, just a quick check, make sure the standard of living hasn't completely fallen through the roof yet. And okay, there is rationalism, which I believe gives me religious schools. Now, um, I think I'm going to take a detour from that and try to go for... Uh, we're going to get manufacturers next week, it looks like. Uh, we can't really work on intensification. 
or intensive agriculture. Therefore, it might be, we'll try our hand at shaft mining. And that's just because we're going to need it to build uh, tooling workshops. No, we get them by default. That's right. You can use them from the start. Um, as I'm wasting some uh, some research points here. I do like that it doesn't, don't like that it doesn't automatically do it for you. Okay, we will go ahead and build up a tooling workshop. You're like, that's pretty strange. Why is he doing that? Uh, mostly to provide an export for our tools and allow us to put some tools back into our farms when we get them. Yeah, some butchering tools would be good. Uh, it'll also allow me to build up a little bit of uh, industrialists without actually having to uh, fully go into them. And again, the same problem here, where they just can't get enough people. Okay, I am quite confused. Why do you need 540 officers when you only have 400? 450. What? Sorry. <laughs> Hold up. Some really weird's happening here. How do we have... Okay, we got... 74.1 service... Okay, servicemen. Alright, that doesn't make any sense. We have... 2.2... 5-8k officers. I'm guessing that includes their families. What? Maybe there are officers working in different jobs? No, they're they're all working at the barracks. Uh, I'm guessing this includes their families. Okay. Whatever you say, game. <laughs> you can't find officers even though you are completely full on officers. All right. <laughs> Whatever you say. Um. And I think we are going to attempt this war with Transvaal now. Uh, because we've managed to bring down the radicals a little bit. Uh, we're now at a decent uh, GDP. Looks like we've tripled it uh, since we began. We've also... Eh, you're never going to like me. So I... Ah! Uh, oh, actually... The landowners don't want a professional army. Of course they don't. They do want police, though. Huh? Imagine that. No. Uh, we'll come back to that later. Um, as soon as we get tools, then... I Okay, strange. Now, now they want to fully employ the... Whatever. Oh, and my heir died. Nice. <laughs> Whatever. Okay. Uh, oh, our ruler's ambitious. He has a uh, degree cost. Nice. And we'll keep improving. Let's keep trying not to piss off groups. Okay, there's tools. Uh, I believe you're only going to produce 30. You're probably not even going to get fully employed, to be honest. Uh, so, we will go for butchering tools, and then we are going to export whatever meat we get surplus to the British market. Uh, furthermore, looks... oh, that's because we're not building anything. Uh, right. Uh, ooh, 
do I see? Oh, we're already at the limit on uh, infrastructure. Okay, and that point that if that's the case, we'll go ahead and get started with our port. Um, let's also go ahead and get started with our war with Transvaal. As far as I can tell. Maybe it's like a surplus of officers. Uh, let's check him out. Is he good? He's a baby, but uh... no, he doesn't. He doesn't have a tr <laughs> what the. <laughs> Nobody say anything about that. Those eyes. Okay. Um. Right. L let's get this war started. I, I don't know what's going on with the military. If I lose, I lose. Whatever. Um, yeah. Okay. <laughs> let's let's not propose a. Did you did you do what you think you did? You did he increase with me? Yes, I believe he did. Okay. Nope, that's that's not what I'm looking for. There we go. Okay. Uh, if I had to guess, fine. Get out. There we go. You improved too much with me. Uh, speaking of which, how is my uh, infamy? Still good. Cool. Britain, please do not join this war. That's that's all I ask. Okay. Uh, once we. Oh, good. It's making money. Oh wow! It's even mostly. Uh, there's buy orders from who? Oh, from the lot. Did they really consume that much? Do you you huh? What? Okay, more things that do not make any sense to me. <laughs> Says it uses five tools. Uh oh, never mind, never mind. I'm dumb. Uh, throughput is high. Yes, that is fine. Okay, well that's good. Anyways. Uh, that means we're making plenty of tools. Uh, let's go ahead and get, uh, again, set the strategic objective. Ooh. Ooh, no. Ooh, that, that's really bad. <laughs> it's like, that's really good. No, that's really bad. Um, I just want to check if there were any rulers that made sense. Okay, uh, just defend the front, my guy. And yeah, looks like um, our troops are perfectly fine. Okay. And it's never made sense to me if everybody... No. Looks like mobilization kind of speeds up. Ooh, he's an explorer now. Good for him. Um, once the war breaks out, but I imagine this should be fairly simple. Okay, and the industrialists are now in the... I'm... <sighs> How much do you want to bet? They've got 589, probably because they can read. Uh, looks like they got a bunch of shopkeepers in the Trade Center. Mainly. Trade Center and the logging camps. Okay. Uh, how is my port? Almost finished. I can almost import cannons if I felt like it. Okay, uh, all of the preparations for mobilization are complete. Let's go ahead and see. He's lost, but we managed to blunder into him, even though he got charted terrain. That's a really scary one. Uh, but we did manage to do more killed, funnily enough. Uh, I think I'm going to cut, make sure we do not lose our position, though. And the trade union boss just died. How tragic. Not. 
Okay, uh, we got our port up and running. If we get a... I was going to say if we get a clipper uh, shipyard built, we can upgrade to the next level. However, I'm just going to put in for a trade route for that. I truly do not see the reason to build them up. Uh, given that we barely use it. We do not need to build that uh, economy ourselves. Okay. Uh, with that, though, we can now produce domestic... I'm feeling furniture. Textiles is also a good idea. Uh, can't remember the... Furniture takes fabric and wood, turns it into... Yeah, this is the one we want. Wood, fabric, and tools. That's excellent. That's exactly what we need. Uh, we've also got shaft mining, which will make tool making even better when we get access to it. Oh, uh, when I say we get access to it. I might be lined down to gold mining, because if we can get that, that pretty much sets us for the rest of the game. Ooh, 31% tax waste. What from? How now, brown cow? From four trade routes. Ooh, gross. What, uh, what's taking the most of the trade routes these days? Which ones can I cancel? Uh, we can get rid of the meat one. That's not significant. We can get rid of the... No, I think we're going to have to keep it there. Okay. Oh, well. Uh, we did manage to take over Transvaal, though. And now I think we're going to start a policy of military drawdown. And we'll go down to, say, 10. 10, I think, would be very reasonable. Uh, we're also going to increase uh, relations with, say, um, where is he? Big GB. GB, please don't be angry with me. Uh, we'll also increase it with Cape Colony, because why not? Portugal, I don't care. I really don't. Uh, right, though. We have now got... Ooh, you're <laughs> over the infrastructure already. Nice. Uh, awesome. Uh, I'm immediately going to cancel your bananas, because fruit sucks. Fruit is not a trade good I want to invest into. Alright. So that's step one of the Zulu shuffle. Step, ooh, yes, we can see these guys are making 45 bucks um, in productivity. That means to me, making a crap ton of money, and it looks like it's mostly from tea. So I could go ahead and remove my cotton mines, <laughs> my cotton mines, my cotton industries in order to uh, make way for more tea plantations. Uh, I really am going to turn into the spiffing Brit. <laughs> um, great. Uh, out of curiosity. Okay, services are not through the roof at the moment. All the same, though, I think I will build a coal mine just for, one, to use up some more tools, two, to provide for that services. Um, yeah. Okay, but that leads us to our next big decision for this game. And that's if we want to be crazy enough to go attack, say, I don't know, Madagascar. Which would give me a total of quite a bit of infrastructure to be able to use. Oman is, uh, Zanzibar is also an excellent... Why is that? How many people do you have there? Ah, urban planning. Maybe. Uh, Oman is a really good choice to attack. They often don't have a huge... Uh, naval presence. Usually they build it down. Yeah, they've only got five ships, so that's pretty easy for us to get. We could also attack, say, somebody in the Indian Ocean. 
uh, somebody like, I don't know, Sulu. But that would run the risk of one, well, he doesn't have a ton of, uh, of history. There's no population there. That's the reason we're not doing it. Um, we can either do that, or we can try to develop and play tall and go for railways. Uh, at this present moment, I'm feeling like... I don't know. I think I'm going to put a pause here in the episode. I'm going to think about this for a little bit. Which direction we want to take this campaign. It's going pretty well so far. And I don't know. I'll get back to you with that. As always, thank you for watching. And stay tuned for more Zulu Suffling.